Come on down. You're the next contestant on Price is Right Wrestling. And you survive war games and you want to tune in to see what the fallout of war games will be. You get more Von Wagner and more Grayson Waller. Oh, you didn't want either of those? Well, tough shit, pal. I'll tell you who's over. Ha ha ha. I'm a genius, damn it. Cro-Magnum, Van Hammer, and Grayson Waller. It's such good shit. Ha ha ha. I'm John Rettham with my review, WWE NXT 2.0. And will Johnny stay or will he Gargano? Okay, that one didn't work at all. But yes, the Fallout of War Games. And boy, this is certainly a show that existed with a bunch of stuff that happened. Was it good? Was it bad? Was it indifferent? A lot of it certainly happened. I can say that much. Let me know your thoughts on this show in the comments, please. And if you want to check it out after this, check out my War Games review. I certainly had some choice words for it. So anyway, uh, the cage is already set up because this is the third show in a row that we've had a cage match start a show. I get it. I understand that you're trying to drive up ratings, and I certainly won't say that the cage match on last night's Raw was dull, but my god, you thought that Kyle O'Reilly versus Heavy Metal Von Wagner, or as I'm going to call him, Von Keyword Tried Wagner. Because there was a line during uh, this match where Von Wagner uh, tried, Keyword Tried, to blindside Kyle O'Reilly. Keyword tried is going to follow around Heavy Metal Von Wagner. He's he's not good. Fucking Christ, he's not good. He's not interesting. He makes Eric Watts seem interesting. He makes David Flair seem like a dynamic personality by comparison. That's really fucking sad. And I'm sure he's a nice guy. I'm sure he's trying. They thrust him out there way too soon. Let me tell you right now, I hate being thrust out there way before I'm ready because I'm just standing there with my hands over my junk wondering why the hell didn't I wear clothes for this presentation. Moving hastily on from that image that I've all implanted in your head, this was a cage match. They thought that this was a way to hook people for the rest of the show. Well, Kyle O'Reilly, one of the premier workers in wrestling, he's he had a great run in Ring of Honor. He's done some great stuff in WWE. Even though I'm not necessarily certain this face turn has worked, he seems like a likable guy, and they're going to have input over Heavy Metal Von Wagner on the way out. Von Keyword Tried Wagner. I'm going to come up with more goddamn nicknames because i got to come up with something to make this fucker any more interesting than he already is. Which, that's a goddamn challenge. That's really a fucking challenge. So... This went forever. And Von Wagner won. He tried to get over. And he really fucking didn't. And then O'Reilly's hanging up in the ropes. And he keeps hammering the door into his face. It was nowhere near that. Not that I want anybody injured. I really don't. But Von Wagner just... This isn't going to work. If he is not, like, jobbing on main event and 205 Live within, oh, I don't know, the next year, I'll be amazed. Some people take a while to get going, but good God, this guy has no fucking upside. None at all. And also, you can use his freaking brow as a goddamn coat rack if you want to. Hell, you could set a goddamn beer up there. You could set a case of beer up there, and he probably wouldn't even notice. So anyway, yeah, I don't really like Von Wagner, in case you haven't been able to fucking tell. So anyway, Gargano will address his future tonight. And they show a, you know, they show in a form of a tweet from Sam Roberts... Walt Disney's least favorite professional broadcaster. If you get it, you get it. So Joe Wayne Gacy and Harlan Myers are talking. It's going to be Harlan's in-ring debut, and we can change the future. Can you change yourself into a more interesting gimmick or something where, oh, I don't know, you're not just being a caricature. That's the problem with a lot of NXT 2.0. There's some energy to some segments. There's some potential for some breakout stars. The show is a complete 180 from the black and gold brand, which isn't the worst thing in the world, but also now it's gotten to the point where they're just hurling shit at the goddamn screen, and what's sticking isn't all that great. There's a few things where you're like, oh, we could sift through this and find a few diamonds in the turds, or we can, and if you have diamonds in your turds, you probably should maybe visit a doctor or take some Pepto-Bismol, maybe that'll break down the diamonds. Ooh, these diamonds in, in your stool. I'm just going to take the shit, uh, the piss out of this goddamn show and I'm just going to shit all over because why not at this point? If I can, you know, survive Raw, if I can survive SmackDown, I can survive this. But I don't know why NXT has gotten to this point. And honestly, I'm not shocked that the ratings have fucking fallen. I hope the ratings continue to fall and USA Network can pull the plug and maybe they can put 2.0 on the cock. And then maybe they can, oh, I don't know, put even less effort into the show. At least less good effort. So, Rex Steiner is here. He wants Ciampa, I assume it, New Year, Nude Year's Evil. I might as well just call it that. I, I'm assuming that's when they will do the match. But here's Diamond Mine. 
with uh, Malcolm Bivens basically saying, well, Roderick Strong will be here next week. He wants you. Why does Roderick Strong want to face off against uh, Rex Steiner? I have no idea. He did have one funny line, though, Bivens did. LeBron Breaker. That was kind of funny. That would also imply that Rex Steiner has won a lot of championships. Um, and he basically shoves uh, Bivens after saying, see you next week. Okay, cool. All right. Rex Steiner really does, he's just like his dad and his uncle mixed into one. It's fucking amazing. It's just really funny. This guy gets it. This guy really fucking gets it. And then Brooks and Jensen, or Brooks Jensen and Josh Briggs, and, you know, the Brooks and Dunn and whatever and all these goddamn cowboy references, they took on the two Creed brothers. Creed two, Electric Boogaloo, and Creed, I don't know, Rocky V. I, the Creed brothers that are in Diamond Mine that are bland as far as characters this it was a match that just existed by the way the by the way msk is going to mi uh, meet the shaman we find out who the shaman is a little bit later grizzled hung veterans join commentary they're soon to be rectimized and this match i didn't care i didn't fucking care the tag division's a goddamn dumpster fire because there could be some potential for good talent here but you know for like good talent to bubble up but nope let's just throw them in and let's just make it ridiculous what happened to Drake and Gibson? They used to be really good in the ring. Now they're doing bad comedy. And they probably could do comedy, but they can't do WWE's brand of bad comedy because Vince McMahon and co. and Sean and whoever the fuck else is in charge of this goddamn thing just doesn't care about putting on a good goddamn program anymore. <laughs> but they took the tag rope, yet Brooks and Jensen still win. Okay! I don't know what the point of that was. Are they trying to make the grizzled young veterans look like idiots? Not having to try too hard to do that. Oh, never let Heavy Metal Vaughn, you know, keyword tried Wagner cut promos again, my fucking goodness. I have I have seen people reading off of cue cards for their first, like, news broadcast or whatever, or their first press conference that did better than that. Maybe don't overly script people or get them a fucking manager. You, you got plenty of people that probably shouldn't be in the goddamn ring that could be managers and why don't you just do that. Or have Von Wagner just be a goddamn you know bodyguard for somebody. You could be my bodyguard, and I'll be your long lost pal. So uh, Zion is ready to fist Santos Escobar while Electra Lopez watches, and then Duke Wigson he is knocking uh, Cameron Grimes because Grimes took the Clippers to the Duke and clipped off his hair. And then Grimes shows up and says, "Okay, let's not have any cheating. Let's have it where all the rules are out the window, no holds barred." Also, he's wearing headgear and a wig like Buddy Roberts did in the world-class days and Kurt Angle did after his hair versus hair match at Judgment Day 2002 with Edge. So, we get Brooks and Briggs and all, and they're talking to Kushida and Ikeman fucking Jiro. Scrap the tag division if you're going to if you're going to do this Kushida. Just scrap the goddamn tag division. Just fucking stop it. Again, can't stand the Ikeman Jiro gimmick. The gimmick. That's it. Anytime I see it, I want to bludgeon myself in the goddamn head because it would be more suitable than dealing with Ikkem and fucking Jiro. So anyway, Grizzled Hung veterans show up, and then Casey and Caden have concert tickets. KKK, that's not good. And they start getting in a fight. Why? Who the fuck knows? Let's move hastily on. Karen Q is asleep behind the bar. Do they know what the fuck they're doing anymore? So Tasha Price is hanging out, um, <coughs> back, I don't actually know the name she's using, but she was Tasha Price in AEW, uh, on AEW Dark and AEW Dark Elevation, and she's got talent, I love, you know, the fact she was more of a crazy chick, and the fact that she looked like she could be on top of it, okay, terrible rendition of the Buck Cherry song, but I like Tasha Price, she's got some personality, and yeah, she looks good, and she will fit in on WWE programming, uh, Grayson Waller was left out in the cold because L.A. Knight got her in the car and said, you know, like this view? Yeah. Yeah, I think we would like that view. Um, then ha uh, Hayes, along with Tricky Ticky Williams, took on Dexter Loomis because this is a feud that apparently was happening whether we wanted it to or not. Was it bad? No. But Hayes is good. I don't really care for Tricky Ticky Williams because he's just there and he just kept scaring him and then eventually we caused a DQ and... Uh, Loomis tried to choke out, uh, we had the Caucasian man choke out two African American men in Orlando, news at 10, and, all right, we, we had that happen, I guess Loomis is going to challenge Hayes for the North American Championship, one of the many championships in WWE, 
Hey, who's the shaman? It's Riddle. Okay, you know what? Eat shit whoever booked this. If it was Bruce Pritchard, I hope he freaking ends up comatose. If it, was, it wasn't Kevin Dunn, but I just honestly hope he's thrown off a goddamn bridge. You know, maybe the bridge he lives under, the goddamn beaver looking troll. Johnny Ace, he fucking deserves to go rot. And Vince McMahon, I think this company will be better off when Vince McMahon, you know, you know the promo. Seriously, Riddle is the shaman. MSK are freaking done. They're done. They're done. I love them. They're goddamn done. They're great in the ring. This has been both five weeks for Riddle to be the shaman. What's in the bag? Sharing is Karen. <sighs> Just take the bag and hit him across the head. Actually, that's unfair. Riddle doesn't have a brain, so he wouldn't affect it anyway. So, toxic attraction with the madness. And they're hearing all of their badness. Andy and Persia are... Well, they want to get back in tag team, uh, you know, competitiveness, and Indy uh, was just all happy that Loomis was there, and Persia was dressed like a nurse that I saw in a movie online once by mistake. That's all I'm going to say. Always delete your search history. Gargano, the band is back together! All right, so Valentina Faraz and Ulyssa Leon uh, took on JC and Gigi with Mandy in the corner. Scintillating camera work during this match, I have to note. JC, sweet fucking Christ. And Gigi was acting all weird. Not acting a fool, but acting all weird. Um, the you know, Valentina and Ulyssa got in some shots and a pump kick. One, two, three. So, Mandy promo. We got all the gold. We like gold. Knox Core, Jade, Io Shirai, Raquel. Core is in a sling. Apparently, she did actually hurt her arm. Hopefully, she's going to be all right very soon. Raquel shows up with a chair. And, you know, she was disappointed. There were no minorities for her to toss over the wall. So, Tiffany's Epiphanies, Gymnastics, hopefully not ending like that one Final Destination movie, if you know, you know. Tony has Pete's mouthpiece, why, who the fuck knows? Tony D'Angelo, by the way, who doesn't love Tony's D? I know many people do on Twitter. You love to see Tony's D on uh, camera. I'm going to keep saying Tony's D until you're all uncomfortable. And Andre Chase said, well, hey, if you would have listened to my strategy, you would have been the star and not Grayson Waller. How about you face me next week, says Tony's D. Cora and Raquel are talking. Promos are not their thing, mainly because Cora um, you know, is fine, but she needs more time to establish her character, and Raquel just isn't interesting. She tries to do the weird Hank Scorpio pose, as I call it, and that's really about all she has. The stock on Raquel has just dropped dramatically. Like, at first she was fine, and then it's just gone downhill. So anyway, uh, they talk about winning the uh, Women's Championship, and Cat has a bat. I got plenty of them. And you have, boy, everybody that is from Scotland that's watching my videos will be offended. All three of you. Um, I've got plenty, she says. Santos Escobar with Legoland Phantasm, including Electra Lopez, sweet fucking Christ Electra Lopez, took on Zion Quinn. All over Electra Lopez. This match is all over Electra Lopez. Okay, this match is all because Electra Lopez has these two men... Fighting for her affections. Pounding. Fisting each other. Lost my train of thought once again. Electra Lopez. Let's focus on that. Match wasn't bad. She did try to pass Nux uh, at one point to uh, Zion Quinn. But he would be an honorable man. And also Santos Escobar would get the victory with the uh, Phantom Driver. And there you go. But whose side is Electra Lopez on? What a wonderful side it is. So, uh, Diamond Mine, we're talking to Hayes and Tricky Ticky Williams. Apparently, we're just going to have everybody feud with everybody. Have Ivy Nile win the North American Championship. I mean, hell, why not at this point? So, Boa challenges uh, Idris Eno Enoif. I think that's how it's said. Okay. This is nothing as Boa, but why is he there? He's not interesting. Here's Gargano, the final farewell. Do -do -do -do. He says, I have this all because of the fans. It's all, it's all because of you. And how he's going to become a dad soon. And they do baby wrestling. There's some emotional stuff. It was so emotional. It would bring a tear to a glass eye. In all seriousness, Gargano has given his life to NXT. And has had some really good moments. Some really down moments. But he has always delivered in the ring. I will say that much. <clears throat> um, change is scary. But sometimes it needs to happen. Since him and Candice are going to become parents sometime in February, I believe. He's not sure what his future is going to hold. He's not sure if he's going to resign, basically, without saying that. And then suddenly the camera tightens up on him, so you know something's going to happen. Grayson Waller attacks him because he was upset that Ellie Knight took Tesha Price. Granted, if I had a chance to Tesha Price, I'd be upset that I lost her too. But also, you should actually respect if women want to go with somebody other than you, Grayson Waller, you fucking creep. He hits Gargano, puts a chair on him, and, you know, hits him and power bombs him through the announcer's table. So 
If Gargano uh, comes back, then he will face off against Grayson Waller. That'll put butts in seats. Or he'll leave. I don't know what the fuck's going to happen. In the immediate future, he is going to go home. He's going to have some fun and become a parent with Candice. So it is what it is. So yeah, we here at Price is Right Wrestling would like to remind you to control the pet population. Have your pets spayed or neutered. Goodbye, everybody.